Welcome to the first in a series of videos about the Quistle, the 3D printed modular penny whistle. Given that you're watching this, you've hopefully got a copy of the Quistle zip file in front of you, and you've either printed the files or you're preparing to print them. If you don't have a copy of the files, head over to www.donaldlindsay.co.uk where you can download load a copy of the zip file for a donation of £2.49. I should say at this point that I'm not averse to people sharing these files around the place, and have chosen a Creative Commons license, hoping that this is appropriate, that seems to suit my purposes. See the bottom left hand side of the Quistle, and refer to the Creative Commons site for more information about what the symbols there mean. Basically, I tend, it, I tend it to be a bit like shareware. If somebody passed you the files and you're enjoying the Quistle, I'd really appreciate it if you took the time out to donate. It will help keep me in filament and hot ends. And meanwhile, I intend to start populating Thingiverse for mods for the Quistle. And uh, little upgrades to allow it to play different scales and so on. Opening the zip, you should see nine files. These are... Quistle D barrel, Quistle D barrel with support, Quistle D bottom hand, Quistle D bottom hand with support, Quistle D top hand, Quistle D top hand with support, Quistle H1 fipple, Quistle ring mounts, and Quistle scooped windway. Some of these names are a wee bit mysterious. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Three of the files are duplicates, being Quistle D barrel, which prints the same part as Quistle D Barrel with support. The only difference being that the with support version, which this was, is printed with a little bit of built-in support that I've designed. If you find that you need support for your prints, I recommend that you use the with support files that I've provided because the type of support that Slicer software usually creates can damage the tone of the instrument. So I recommend that you make sure that you turn off support in your slicer software and instead use the with support version of the file that I've provided. The same applies to Quistle D top hand and Quistle D bottom hand. There's Quistle D top hand. You can see it's the top hand finger holes. And Quistle D bottom hand, likewise the bottom hand finger holes. Those two files also come with a with support version or a plain version. Of the remaining files, Quistle ring mounts, which I'm just picking up here. Quistle ring mounts produces three decorative rings to be placed around the larger sections of the whistle. These are intended to be printed in a different colour. If you're printing in PLA, you may find those quite fragile. Let me know how you get on with them, and I can either design slightly thicker rings, or I can send you a version that doesn't need rings, and doesn't have the spaces for them. That will just be a one colour version, obviously. Finally, uh, Quistle H1 Fipple, and the Quistle Scooped Windway. H1 Fipple is the Fipple, which is the part that provides the edge for the air to be split over. And the windway. In this case, this version is called scooped because it has a scoop out of it, a hollow. There's also a version that's flat. I find scooped better at the moment, but uh, let me know how you get on because all of the variant windways and variant fipples that I've created, uh, once I've had a chance to test them, the best of them will be posted to Thingiverse as well for you to experiment with. These fit together. I'll show you how uh, in a minute. Once printed, if the internal bore parts of the whistle need any cleaning, you can use a fine sandpaper rolled into a tube. Here's one prepared earlier. Blue and blue, Peter. Okay. Now, what you want to do is insert that you should be able to do this quite easily given the, sh the short length of the parts. Insert that in from one end and then from the other end. 
And while it's in there, vigorously, really vigorously, to try and get a high polish, steadily turn the part and vigorously shake your little sandpaper tube. If you use progressively higher grades, finishing with a wet and dry um, type grade, then you should uh, be able to get quite a smooth bore. The smoother the bore is, the brighter the tone should be. If the fickle blade has printed out rough at all, that's the blade, the all-important edge for the edge tone, if the fipple blade has printed out rough at all, and you'll be able to see that if you look at it, that can also hurt the tone. Try it in the whistle, and if it doesn't sound how you want it to, then you're going to need either to print it out again, or to tweak it, and this is a useful thing to know how to do anyway. If you want to tweak it, then I recommend that you refer to the website Chiff and Fipple, you'll see the address down at the bottom just there, who have forums full of whistlers who do this, and also who actually have a tweaking article by an experienced tweaker. Uh, I think there's actually two contributing to the article. But anyway, it tells you all about how to tweak fipples and uh, gives you ideas for other things you can try. Now, to put the whistle together, the parts can be assembled as follows. You're going to need PTFE thread seal tape or something similar to allow you to seal the joints of the whistle properly. You can also use a glue to attach windway to fipple. Although be extremely careful not to glue the whistle to your bottom lip here. Best avoid super glue, I think, in favour of adhesives or solvents that don't stick to people. Um, first, the ring mounts, which are attached as follows. Here's the bottom hand and its ring mount. push it over the top and just persuade it gently so it doesn't delaminate down to the uh, there okay so you get the idea just push it down until it looks like it's comfortably fit fitting on there likewise for a top hand you just want to persuade it over And then push it down onto the top of the wider section of the, the piece. Okay, there you go. And last but not least, the uh, barrel section. Again, just persuade the mount over. And push it down against the top edge of the wider section of the piece. There you go. Those are purely decorative. Um, you can use glue as well if the mount feels at all loose. Next you want to assemble the body of the whistle. As you assemble each joint, you want to wrap it with PTFE tape to complete the seal. So find the free end of the tape, stretch it out, try and keep it flat. Oh. And you want to just wrap. You'll see that there are grooves on the tenon, which is the narrow part of the piece that you want to be wrapping. These are not screw threads, so don't try screwing this into place because they're, they're not actually continuous screw threads. They're just, uh, they're just concentric. They're, you know, they're just, they're just circular grooves. Um, that uh, they're, they're, the, this, this, is, this is typical of the way that the bagpipes are uh, made airtight using either uh, hemp thread or PTFE tape. For the bottom hand section, you want this joint to be really firm. So give it a good wrapping. Line the parts up. That should be strong if you've put enough tape on it. 
that should be completely airtight. It's better than gluing because not only can you take it to bits again if you want to, to stick it in your pocket, you can also pack it if you find there are any tiny leaks. It's difficult once you've glued something and you find there's a tiny leak to break it apart again. You can't really do that. Whereas if you use a thread seal, then you can just renew it whenever it needs renewed. The second joint that you're going to seal is a tuning joint. It's a tuning slide. That's why it's longer. So with this one, you want it to move slightly more freely. So don't wrap it quite so heavily as the bottom hand joint. And you don't want it all the way down to the mount this time. To be in tune, this tuning slide, I've designed it to sit about there. That allows a slight bulge where the, the slide is extended, roughly about there. This is, I think, a good place for a bulge. Um, if you're fussy, try and line up the writing where it says whistle and bottom hand and so on. You want that to be standing off by maybe about not quite a half an inch. 10 millimetres if you're doing millimetres. The last joint you want to wrap is the joint at the top of the barrel. And this one again needs to be good and tight. This is not a moving joint. Only the tuning slide is a moving joint. So you want this one solid. That feels like it could still take a bit more tape to me. I want that one to be absolutely solid so I don't lose the fipple. Fall off. It's a small part. So there, that's it. Right. Nope, could still take more actually. That joint's a wee bit loose. You might find, depending on how experienced you are at printing. Um, there we go. I've been inventing instruments longer than I've been using 3D printers, so I'm still getting to know 3D printers. Sometimes I find that my parts have very, very, very slightly different diameters from print to print. It's probably to do with room temperature. So the other advantage of using thread sealing is that you don't have to worry about things like that. Um, wooden parts in uh, particularly older pipes and so on are often very eccentric in their sizes. Um, so uh, thread sealing gets around that problem without having to confront it really. Um, now, I've got a fipple here, and a windway. I'm just going to bung in the first windway that I can find and hope that it's the same grade as I've sent to you. Not bad, I can tinker with that to get it more in tune. As I say, you can glue this in place. Probably it's a good idea in the long run because you will lose a very small amount of air. That's just the push fit. You will be losing a very small amount of air here. If I glue that in place, I'll probably hear that tone clean up right away. Um, I've got a couple of other whistles here that have been uh, ready-made. And right away you can hear that gluing that windway in place is going to give you a better tone. There you go. I'll play them in another in another another video. I'll show you how to play them. Um, for now, uh, that's all, and I hope you enjoy printing your whistle and footering about with it. Let me know how you get on, and uh, watch this space for some videos that tell you how to get to grips with the thing if you're not already an experienced whistler. Thank you.